welcome back to the uh, podcast with Hans. Um, I'm going to read out this title, and you guys probably saw it. It's Teaching the Dogs uh, What They Do Not Want to Do Rather Than What They Do Want to Do. So, and uh, I think, I, to me, your teaching is uh, unique in the sense of, of, especially what's going on out right now, when you, when, you, when you look at social media, what's out there. Nobody does this, yeah. as far so, as I know, anyway. Yeah, so you guys might want to definitely uh, take It may be somebody, this. but, you know. Not, yeah. well, well, I have a video also on the obedience. We need to put them up. Okay. That's what basically does is, is does that. Okay. Talks, you know. Okay. And it explains it in greater details. But okay. basically, you have it downloaded, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, it, yeah. I don't know when you guys are listening to this. So it could be up on the. Yeah. It's, the it's side. called it's called obedience for everyday life or something like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think I had that. Uh, yeah. So so what's going on these days in training, uh, of sport or anything really? It's it's uh, teaching the dogs to do things which make them happy. Yeah. Right. So if you sit, you get cookie or toy. Right. Yeah. If you bite the sleeve, it's gonna be fun. And I can go in specifics, right? Like uh, in protection, <clears throat> you. Um, you 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 do it in prey drive. Which prey drive is really kind of positive things. Dog lo- do loves to hunt, so they hunt. But protection is not hunting. Protection yeah. is protecting. Yeah. And uh, so it's. Um, uh, but it's all, all, all this when you train a protection dog. All this starts from day one from obedience, right? So uh, these days during obedience. If anywhere you go, any sport, anywhere, it, 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 it's, it's, people teach the dogs tricks. Yeah. I call it circus tricks. They teach them tricks and, and not to work for you or with you, right? They teach you, you teach the dog to do what they like. Oh, I'll put my ass on the ground to sit and I get cookie yeah. or toy, yeah. right? Right? And I will let go of the toy because he's not moving. But if I let go, he will give it to me right back. Yeah. Right. It's all about the dog, right? Yeah. Which people will say, well, it's good. It's supposed to be about the dog. No, it's not about the dog. It's about you and the dog, right? It's about the relationship you have with your dog. Yeah. Okay. And what kind of re- uh, uh, relationship you should have with the dog. You should be the leader, and dogs got to be the follower. Now, there are fools out there who will deny that there is such concept as leader and all yeah. that. I'm not going to get into it here yeah. now. Just take my word for it. it you know, dogs are pack-oriented animals, and they have to have a leader or they'll yeah. turn into one. There's no other option. Yeah. It's like when you have a cat, you can have parallel existence of ignoring each other. Uh-huh. Right, basically, yeah. and cat yeah. wanna come, she comes, you pet it, then she goes, right, whatever, yeah. right? It's in terms of the cat. Why is that? Because cats are not pack-oriented animals, yeah. right? Where dogs are, and the, the 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 pack is a unit, a team, right, which works in cooperation. That's how they survive. Yeah, get food. Or protect. Get or food, protect, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Mainly get food, you know, yeah. or protect. Yeah. And um, and so so there gotta be a leader, and the leader if if is, is periodically may be challenged in the pack of wolves, for example. Mm-hmm. But the wolf uh, gotta kick ass the leader, otherwise he's not gonna be leader. Yep. Now we aren't kicking ass, we aren't beating the dogs or anything, yeah. but we gotta establish leadership position. Yeah. And so I always like to start with wolf, right? Uh, people say, well, dog is not wolf. Well, that's, that's another discussion. Yeah. Right? But uh, everything which dog does is coming from wolf. Yeah. He lost some of the instincts maybe and all that because they were not bred for. But everything the dog does is coming from wolf, yeah. right? And they're the same species. So I don't know how somebody can say they're not the same thing. 
Yeah. Right? So, so in Wolfpack, the leader, for example, will eat first. They kill some deer or something and they will eat first. Now, do you think that the other wolf doesn't want to eat first? <laughs> they all, yeah. So that the dominant wolf, that leader wolf, is making the other wolves to do what he wants them to do, right? And yeah. not what they want to do. Yeah. Right? That's a good example. Yeah. And that's everything like that. Breeding, yeah. you know. I breed, I'm the wolf leader, yeah. so I'll breed. You want to breed? Yeah, I know you want to breed, but I'll kick your ass. Yeah. You will not breed, I'll yeah. breed. Yeah. So you always, it's a natural state of affair in the wild for the canine, in this case, canis lupus. Your dog is canis lupus too, in Latin. Uh to be forced to do what the leader wants to do, okay? Yeah. So when going back to you and your dog with this, this knowledge, you need to do the same thing, all right? Because, um, because in critical situations, it will backfire on you if you teaching the dog to do what they want to do, yeah. you know? so. So let's say, let's say I, give, uh, I give always this example. You have a dog and you taught him obedience with a toy, mm -hmm. like in sport. Yeah. And there's place for that. Yeah. You know, and that's training in drive. Yeah. That's another thing. We talk, did we talk about the training in drive and out I of drive? I think so. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. mainly we train out yeah. of drive, right? And, and, and trainers will come and look at my train and say, oh, your dogs look like they don't want to be here. I said, that's fine, man. You know, I want to be here. Yeah. So I don't care what the dog wants. Yeah. Right? It's not about happy and performing happy circus tricks and yeah. shit. Okay? That's not what the training is all about. The training is about when you get yourself in critical situations with your dog, the dog is going to respond to your commands no matter what. Yeah. Okay? And you are not going to achieve it by training the dog in a way that you, 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 you know, you, you, they perform certain commands, as I call it, tricks in this situation yeah. for treats, treats or for toys, for toy. yeah. right? Because that dog says, okay, I want this treat yeah. or toy. So when he says, sit, I sit and I get the treat, you know. It's like the monkey pushes a level and gets a banana, right? Yeah. You know, yeah, so if you got to push the level and then you get banana. Yeah. You know, she's not pushing the level for the guy who, who takes care of it. He, she's doing it, the monkey is doing it for herself. Yeah. Same thing with the dog. So, so I always say, when you train dogs like that, you're acting like a pest dispenser. Yeah, pest dispenser. Right? Yeah. The, dog, the dog pushes the button and it gets... Uh, what do they call those things coming out of pest dispenser? Oh, a, well, well, I mean, the pet, tic tacs or pet, yeah. pet, pet, well, pet was the yeah, yeah, little, yeah. The they're breath toy. mint, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, candy. So, it's a treat. It's yeah, something. It's candy. a reward. It's a reward. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so, ultimately. so you know, you push. And <laughs> yeah. you get, so yeah. the dog, uh, instead of pushing on pest dispenser, yeah. will sit. Yeah. And you give him a cookie. So you are a pest dispenser. Yeah. yeah. You know, so if so, you're listening to this, <laughs> uh -huh. so if you're listening right now, <laughs> there's a chance you might be a pest dispenser. That's fine. Maybe not. I don't know. Well, there's always time to. Yeah, that's why you're it. listening to the show. Is, yeah, is so, so yeah. and that's how everybody trains because dogs are really happy. And a lot of commercial trainers, when they are um, uh, trying to sell the dog training with their demo dog, you can see this happy dog prancing around and all mm -hmm. that. And the dog is prancing around because he's in drive and he wants a cookie. Yeah. And he says, oh, if I do this, this good thing, and I look up at my master, yeah. I'll get a cookie. Yeah, but now <clears throat> imagine you have a dog trained like that, and you go through the woods or on the street, and, and suddenly a cat takes off across your path 15 feet away from you, and dog takes off after a cat. Now you call the dog to come, like during the obedience, and I'm not going to say the business, yeah. but you know which one yeah. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't want to get sued or something. So, you know, so you, uh, so the dog, so you call the dog, come, come. And, and you may or may not have the cookie, 
or the toy, or, or the toy, yeah. but it doesn't really matter. What do you? It's it, it it boils down to the value of the reward, right? Because he, the dog is not working for you; he's working for himself, yeah. right? So, so what's better, chase a cat or rabbit? I'll come back to dad or mom, or, or get a hot dog. Yeah, no, yeah, or a hot dog. right. Well, what, yeah. what, 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 what's better? Yeah. Right. Well, the, well, the cookie doesn't, or hot dog yeah. is nothing compared to speeding cat. Cat, yeah. And you will fail right there. Yeah. Okay. And 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 so when I train the dogs, I make them from day one do things they do not want to do. So, so they have a default. If I don't want to do it, I gotta do it because my master said so. Yeah. There's no any other option ever. Yeah. Right, and um, and that way, when you get into a critical situation, yes, the dog may want to chase the cat, but I say come, and the dog is trained to come, even so he doesn't want to come, yeah. and that needs to be practiced during your obedience, right? And that then carries to all sorts of other exercises like protection or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. But that's where you start in the protection. I mean, in the obedience. Yeah. So. So, uh, so, so you want the dog to do things they don't want to do, right? And through that, also you build relationship. Like for example, every time we come, I bring a bunch of barrels and ladders yeah, and stuff, yeah. and dogs climbing over it, and and people start coaxing the dog to climb on something. I said, no, that's not it. Yeah. You have to force the dog through those Absolutely. obstacles. So they are totally stressed out by the situation, but when they do it and they accomplish uh, the obstacle, right? Then you go and say, good boy. Yep. And you see the dog says, oh, you know, my master is happy. He's my leader. I'm good, you know. And, and you know, <clears throat> we completely forgot the concept. The dog, you know, you know, like when I was learning to train dogs, people always said, uh, uh, the dog is doing it because he wants to please you. Did you ever hear that recently? No, not no. me. It's it's no. no. You train the dog because they get a cookie. Yeah, to right? a cookie. So yeah. so I want the dog to learn or that his yeah. that his number one reward is me being happy, being pleased. Yeah. Right. And I reward him and not with cookie, because I don't want to put anything between me and the dog, yeah. like cookie or toy. Yeah. Right. So as the dog performs the you know, he gets through the obstacle, which is difficult. He's terrified of it, and oh, they're yeah. terrified of weirdest, I so see it. I simplest see it thing. Yeah. And I yell at people, no, yeah. no, 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 don't yeah. just yeah. keep, don't give up. And you wow. must not give up. Dog screams like, oh, oh yeah. shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you are going to die. <laughs> no, you are just walking over milk crates. You are not going to die, <laughs> right? And, and, and you just make them go over yeah. it, and then they get over it. Yeah. And, and you can see the relief of the dog. He made it, and then on top of it, you say, good boy, and Pet him. And people say, well, petting, that's not good enough. I said, are you serious? Petting is just like, uh, and, and, and your voice uh, followed by petting is like one of the strongest rewards you can give the dog. First of all, he's being petted and rewarded by the leader, right? Second of all, the, as you pet the dog, you you are inducing oxytocin, oxytocin, yeah, it's right? Yeah. Which uh, I always want to say endorphin, but well, uh, that comes also, also dopamine, yeah. endorphin. Yeah, I call it cascades of the hormones. Yeah. It's not important yeah. to really know what hormones and how drug. they go. I but call it happy, happy hormones, happy right? Hormones. Yeah, yeah, ultimately. And 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 the dogs become literally addicted to it. It is. It's very similar to when a human, right? I mean, right. It, Kind of, so. Well, the the person when you know when you you know like they k taking dogs to the hospitals or uh, uh, old folks homes, yeah, and they pet it, they get the endorphins yeah. and the oxytocin. Yeah. The people too, yeah, right. That's what I'm saying is even human to human, right. When you hug a child or hug a person, right, or, right, or, or hug like, a tree, hug try a it sometimes. Tree. <laughs> That's another podcast. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm total conservative, but, and but I go and hug a trees, man. Yeah, there's truth in it. You know, in, it's, in, it's really yeah. pleasant. You should try it sometimes. I've never when, done it, but when nobody looks, go. you know, yeah. when nobody looks, yeah. go and. Find a nice tree, nice pine. Like a tree. Just hug it, and you will see it's it's yeah. totally relaxing. 
right? Yes. And, um, the point here is, yeah. The point is that the oxytocin start flowing and you feel better. And, and so the dog, when you do this type of exercises, um, is, um, is uh, um, learning that he has, he's not doing it for himself, he's doing it for you, but he's going to get a paycheck in the end. And it's not gonna be cookie, but it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be you petting him, and saying yeah. good boy. So you say good boy, pet, pet in that order, right? And always pet him same amount of times, like three times, you know. know. So you say good boy, pet, pet, pet. That's it, yeah. right? Don't, don't do it once one time and next time five times, right? Always, you know, and don't do it too much. You don't make a love fest out of it because then the dog will break the command and stuff like that during obedience. So, so, so the dog does it for making you happy, and he never. It's like when he trained protection. Like when I train protection, I will always, I will make sure that the dog wins, right? And the only, you know, I never. So you have a fight or flight, right? And because I never teach them to run away, or give them the opportunity or push them so hard that they would yeah right so they, they, they it's just not in their vocabulary yeah you know they don't you know even so it's in their instinct that instinct was never developed to run uh -huh. I teach the dog in protection you know if somebody's pushing you, you just gotta push a little harder and if he pushes you harder you gotta still push harder and still push harder so I teach the dog during protection to to uh, counter the pressure with pressure plus one yeah. You know, always higher, higher. and and so because uh, the dog never learned to run, he never will run, right? Yeah. Yeah. Until a certain level of pressure. So when I'm when I'm training the dog, I always train for higher pressure than they will ever encounter on the street yeah. of protection, right? Yeah. And going back to the uh, what I'm what I'm saying about this uh, uh, working for me, yeah. you know, the dog it just. When I tell him to do something, he he doesn't want to do like climbing over the ladder or walking over right side up uh, milk crates or barrel lift, you know. Yeah. So so uh, 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 the dog yeah. just never learns to refuse what I want from him. I never allow him to refuse. He just you know I just never you know like like here. Uh, kids says, well, I won't do it. And parents said, okay. No. Same thing with the dog, you know. If, if my dog is, is, is like, even if they're scared, you know, I tell them, you know, you you you, you just got to do it. There's no other option. That's yeah. it. You, yeah. you get, and then they learn. If my daddy tells me to do it, I just got to do it. He, won't, he tells me to jump in the fire. I just got to jump in the fire, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you, did I? Did, I, did we put on podcast a story with my father, how he sent me for my sister? Uh, the hill, yeah. I with think that dog? The dog, yeah. I, I think so, yeah. I think it's, it was there. Yeah, but if that's the same share, thing, right? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the same thing, you know. I'll say it anyway again. Yeah. It doesn't hurt if it's yeah. in two different places, if it is. Uh, you know, when I was a little boy, five years old or four years old, we had a summer home. We still have it in our family. And uh, we were building it, and uh, <clears throat> there was like a, a foundation which was I don't know six feet high, uh -huh. because kind of on the slope, and uh, my father was standing on top of that foundation because on which eventually would be built the house, house yeah. and uh, and I was pushing my sister with two wheel side by side wheel cart down the hill, you know we had we were playing. And we got about, um, I don't know, 150 feet or so for my father and neighbor's dog was big dog, about 80 pounds, I would guess, uh, German Shepherd Collie mix, uh -huh. right? And uh, <clears throat> run, of course, when you're a little boy, that Every, that, that, that dog looks, looks like, like a horse, right? Yeah. Size, right? Or bigger, yeah. Yeah. you know? And this dog run at us and start barking, woo, woo, you know? And I was four and a half years old. I was terrified. Yeah. So I said, ah, f, f the sister. And, and I ran away, right? Like a, like a little boy covered, coward, right? Yeah. 
And I run up there to my father, and I was hoping my father is going to go and chase the dog away and get my sister. And my ma- father stood there, had his uh, hands crossed on his chest, and I could see his disdain in his face. And I, 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 I didn't understand why is he mad at me, right? Yeah. And he looked at me and pointed down. My sister was screaming, crying, tears flying out of her eyes horizontally, man. And the dog running around her and barking. Whoa, whoa, whoa. His name was Bodro, uh-huh. the dog. Bodro. Yeah. yeah. He still remembers. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, I even know where he's buried, man. <laughs> yeah, it was a good dog. Eventually, I become a really good friend with him. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so... So my, my father looked and pointed down towards my sister and looked at me and says, go get your sister. And you see that, see, I, now I had to do what I didn't want to do, right? Just like that dog yeah. train I'm talking about. That's why yeah. I'm using this example, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I was terrified, oh, just yeah. like that dog going over the milk crates, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I was just terrified. I thought for sure I'm going to die. Yeah, that's it. You know, this is it. There's I live to be five. And yeah, there's this dog size of a size of a cow. Yeah, you know, yeah. just barking. And my dad you know, is sending me. And be dog. Like why but would my dad? Was, but there was, yeah. there was no saying no to my father, ever. Yeah. Right. And that's the same so thing. So you were between the dog, the obstacle in a way, and your dad. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, so I'm walking. So I, I go. I get yeah. my sister, and I turn the car around, push her uphill, and dog eventually lost interest and run home. Yeah. Nothing happened yeah. to us, yeah. right? But you know what? I tell you, uh, so this is a good example of of do, doing something you know you don't want to do, yeah. and that's what I teach the dogs, and I know it works yeah. because you know I get scared in my life, but my father, you know, I don't have a really great relationship with him, but but I gotta give him credit for this. You know, he definitely taught me how to suppress fear, yeah. you know, and that, that's still now. I, I mean, I get scared, sure, but you just got to work through that fear, Yeah, you know, and it's the same thing with the dogs. You know, you they're scared of the milk crate, but you tell them you got to go, so they got to go, right? Yeah. And, um, and so they got to listen no matter what. And it doesn't even have to be dangerous situation. Eventually, it translates to dog starts chasing cat, and you say no, come. And dog, you know, it's like my father. If he would tell me no, don't go, so I wouldn't go, right? So the same thing with the dog. Yeah, yeah. You know, there is that story with my dog Buddy and yeah. uh, and my Jake. dog Sarko, yeah. right? Yeah. Buddy number seventeen in the world at his days in competition, all trained with cookies and toys and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I had him for, I don't know, many months, maybe even over a year. And I go hiking with him in the woods. And uh, and there's deer. No, there was Evelina, a javelina. Evelina, that yeah. happened second time with a deer, and that's why I stopped taking him. But uh, uh, there were javelina by this little pond, and uh, the mama and the baby run away, and the father, Havelina, kind of acted like he's wounded to lure my dog. Yeah. And suddenly, my dog didn't even notice them for a while, right? And then suddenly, yeah. he saw it. Yeah. They're about 100 feet away from us. And uh, yeah. Buddy charged the Papa Havelina, you know. And I yeah. said, Buddy, fooey. Yeah. You know, no, yeah. right? And, and, and uh, Buddy kind of came, yeah. And yeah. Buddy kind of stopped for a second. Yeah. Look over his shoulder, you know, as I like to say, he flipped me a finger and just chased the javelina. Yeah. I forget. And I yell. I couldn't speak for three days afterwards. So. Yeah. Now, this was, just to, so people know that this was not under your training. He didn't, no, it was not my training. Yeah, that so was he, a training as it is. Here. That's why I'm using it as an example. Yeah. This was a training as it's done today. Yeah. The, the value of the going after Havolina was much higher than me potentially giving him treat uh, or toy to bite into for cum. You know, and Buddy grabbed the Havolina by the, the back of the, like, where the shoulder blades are. Yeah. And just run over the washes and was flipping on his back like the, yeah. the, the dart on a bull in bullfighting, you know. And <laughs> they were just, they were just... Yeah. Hauling ass, and I said, all right, here I lost $30,000 dog. And I sat on the rock, and two hours later, he came back. 
you know. But then I have another dog which I train the way I'm telling you to train, do things they don't want to do, because Buddy was trained to do things because he wants them to do. So he, so he was taught, okay, I want to chase Havolina, so I'll chase Havolina. Yeah, right? Working for himself. Right, working yeah. for himself and pleasing himself. Yeah. And, 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 and Sarko, I went hiking in Prescott up there on Big Bug Mesa, and four deers hop, pop out of the grass, and he took after them. Similar situation. Yep. Similar situation, and Sarko took off after them. I said, Sarko, come here, fui, come here. And he just made a smooth U-turn and came right back to me and sat in front of me. He said, okay, here I am, Dad. I said, good boy. Mm -hmm. Right? That was it. And that's the difference. No e-collar. No, no e-collar. That's, that's another podcast. I mean, but it's part of this whole e-collar. Yeah, I don't, of, I don't do e-collars. Yeah. So I have one somewhere in the drawer, yeah. but I yeah. haven't seen it for like 15 years. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we can discuss that later. But it, Well, that's a, yeah. that's a big controversy. Yeah. But, it go, but it's not, really. It's not a it, yes and no, but it's... Well, you know, you do want dog to work because he yeah. has an e-collar on or because you said so. Yeah, exactly. We're coming back to the same uh, funda fundamental so, thing that... that and, 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 you know, <clears throat> really... Uh, to, to, to conclude this, the dog, all this starts with those milk crates, the dog walking over the milk crates. Should make a video on that. Okay, yeah, you know, can definitely do that, yeah. You know, the obstacles and yeah. all that. We should get a dog first, the first time when it doesn't want to do it, too, that to, yeah. we kind of need to, to see the difference of. Right, yeah. right. Well, there's plenty always. Somebody oh, always brings it. a dog. <laughs> Every Saturday, almost. Yeah, and, 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 you know, so he teaches the dog, you've got to do what he says, just like did when my father sent me for my sister. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I know it from my dog. My dog didn't want to hate it. Like, what is this? I hate this dude. <laughs> but eventually, learn how to do it. He's fine, you know? Yeah. yeah. And it's not about teaching the dog to get over the obstacle. It's about teaching the dog to do crazy stuff they don't want to do just because you said so. And then when they do it, good boy, pet, pet, oxytocin, happy hormones. Yeah. And they get addicted to it. Oh, I want to say one more thing about that. People say... Um, that the the uh, the petting is not strong enough stimulus or reward for the dog motivate to him yeah. to to do that and I always say to people you know did you ever see a dog which is so called petaholic you know he will bug you for a stick or something and or for pet they will come to you for pet 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 you can not that I ever have done it but I can just imagine you can beat crap out of that dog with a stick and then. Like 15 seconds later, he's going to come and one of the... That's what it is. They, they, they do anything for that pet. They do anything for that pet. But, you know, you got to start them that way. You know? You talk about that when you're, when you're like, watching TV. You can pet... Them. Yeah, yeah, you sit like, there and suddenly like, you're sitting yeah. on the couch and suddenly you're petting yeah. your dog. You didn't even know how it happened. Yeah. Right? But you can build that into the dog too. We're like, Good well, yeah. yeah uh, 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 that's another thing, you know, about how to teach calm, right? Yeah, you know, so that's another episode. Yeah, <laughs> that's, this is a teaser for the future. Episode. Yeah, the, <laughs> how to teach the dog calm. Yeah, uh, yeah. but uh, yeah. didn't we have one for that? You, you probably did. Yeah, it's interesting. So when we post these episodes, sometimes when we're recording, you know, we've done X amount. Uh, yeah. uh, but I, I know I think we covered it. And usually a title should say it, you know, kind of self-explanatory when you go through the podcast. Uh, but but this is not rocket science when people are listening to this. And when I started training with Hans, uh, you know, my mind was head was filled with YouTube videos that I saw. And, and, and then I met Hans and uh, I fairly knew fairly fast that, that this is something unique. Um, it wasn't easy what he's, you know, we had to do, you know, these physical things with the dogs. But... Uh, um, I, I just knew that this is this is something unique that that you're teaching. It's not it's it's fundamental. It's nothing fancy. It's not you know it's not you know it's not it's not fancy. It's fundamental. I don't know how to say it. You know? Well, the biggest problem is what I teach is that everybody almost teaches something different. Yeah, as I said, you I know, came and in people with, are stuck yeah. on that. Yeah, and that includes the dog trainers or their students. Yeah, and they don't want to let go. Yeah. You know, it's like you're climbing a rock and you're suddenly holding on the little outcroppings and, and you can't go anywhere else. You just got to let go and, and reach another outcropping. 
Yeah. And that requires quite a bit to do that. And that's basically what this is. You know, if people are doing something else, it's really... And with trainers especially, because they train their way, right? They learn and all that. And and then I come in and I basically tell them, do everything exactly the opposite. Instead of the, make the dog happy, I teach dog to make me happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? But if you're teaching the dog happy, who cares? You know? Hans likes to say he's an iconic iconoclast. Iconoclast, yeah. yeah. Iconoclastic dog training. Yeah. So look that up. Actually, that's kind yeah, of fun. Iconoclastic. Look, I had to look it up. <laughs> what it <laughs> told me what it is. Uh, well, well, I can say what it is. No, you can. Well, leave it. Leave it fun for the audience. Yeah, yeah. All yeah, right, go look, look it up. up. Yeah. Iconoclastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, um, yeah, it's fundamental. It's not. Um, I like. There's no. Again, no tricks here. No. Basically, it's the you know it's you and the dog. It's the between the. Well, I, f- you know, I personally you know. believe that this type of training, uh, uh, been around for thousands of years, yeah. right? And suddenly now we become touchy feely and woke and I don't know what. Yeah. And everybody gotta be happy and everything yeah. gotta be, you know, like a, like a shoot zone these days or whatever they call it. Yeah. Uh, 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 the dog has to be happy, and yeah. it's like a, it's like a, it's like a circus performance yeah. of happy dogs performing in stress-free environment. Yeah, but that's you not know? reality. That's and, not and, real and, life. And, and, and for sport, yeah, if you want to do sport, sure. that's okay. Great. That's yeah. okay. But don't think that you're doing something beneficial uh, to your everyday life when you get yeah. yourself under the stress. Yeah. You know, or or the dog, you know, like decides to chase a cat across a busy street. Which can happen any, any yeah, moment. Yeah, it happened to me many yeah. times, you know. Yeah. And I, as I said, with, with uh, Sarko, it was great because when I called him, I, I mean, I, you know what? I admit, I was impressed. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was a big I reward. Said, <laughs> I said, shit, you know, Buddy, s- s- number 17 best dog in the world. Yeah. Uh, or in Europe anyway, yeah. and he uh, he didn't come. So where's my dog gonna do right? Yeah. And I said, come and whew. it was just like, yeah. I was I was impressed. Yeah, you know, yeah. I was impressed. But but all this all the all these episodes that hopefully you guys are listening to, um, I mean, this is built on fifty plus years of experience here. I know Hans doesn't like to talk about. Is that accolades, and I have to kind of pull it out sometimes of them, but but it it is fifty years you're listening to, so uh, it is it is what it is. Like you can't replace fifty years of experience. Yeah, I had uh, my first dog know. when I was fourteen. Okay, so it's even you know more than 50, uh, fifty-five but, yeah, or something. Fifty-five. So. I'll be seven in two yeah. months, man. Hey, young man. Hans says, "Don't get old." By the way, anybody listening? Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that's the best advice I can give you. you don't, don't get old, man. Don't get old. So uh, I should. I should always want to start all episodes that right away when people are listening, they, they kind of know a little bit like, wait a minute, this, this man has been, you know, learning for 50 years and you're still learning. That's the Hans, Hans is not Hans doesn't have an ego uh, uh, in the sense of saying like, um, that's it. I reached a pinnacle. And, you know, he always says, well, like, I'm hey, craving, uh, craving to learn something new, yeah. but it's harder and harder, harder you know, and harder. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I'm not yeah. being flippant, no. you know, it's it's. Yeah. It's, uh, but, uh, yeah. it is what it is. You know, yeah. 50 years I mean, I, I just, uh, I don't, I don't like to talk. Yeah. About See, he doesn't like, <laughs> which is, that shows the humbleness in him. He doesn't uh-huh. want to, it's not something you should, but people challenge and this and that silly things. Yeah. I you're always wanna, challenged yeah. on Facebook yeah. where people say, well, why don't you try to do sport? <laughs> well, <laughs> so, you have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, you may learn something. <laughs> if you're if you're watching uh, on this YouTube process, I like to say, or I said it too, but I said, here's my proof. Show your both arms. Like he's got <laughs> scars. He's got scars in his arms. Yeah, I stopped counting about yeah. 140, man. <laughs> How many scars he has? Dog bites. Yeah, they're all over here. All over. But uh, yeah, and, this and, and then some guy says, well, he must be pretty bad dog trainer if he got <laughs> bit so many times. Well, it's like uh, uh, maybe <laughs> you know, but I don't get bit that much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> There's something, yeah. something redeeming about that, right? Old, old scars. Yeah. Uh, but uh, well, thank you, Hans. This was a good, uh, good episode. Um, well, I think all of them are good. I just I hope 
again that if you're a regular listener, your your uh, you know thing starts. Well, what I'm trying out. to do yeah. here, I'm trying to get people unstuck from where they are today. You know, with this training today, it just doesn't make sense. You know, I mean, it may. It may may make sense for sport or for obedience competitions and stuff. Then, yes, you want to use treats and you want to use toys and you want the dog to be happy-go-lucky because that's how you get points, right? But life is not like that, everyday life, right? Life is it's not about points. You know, life is about you and your dog to survive and do the right thing and... Don't hurt people who don't deserve to be hurt and, and all that. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's again, that's what I love about the training. It's everyday life, real life stuff. You know, no, well that's no that's problem. you see, you see uh, we degenerated into the, the, these days as a modern civilization degenerated into uh, you know, like, okay, I got a dog and I gotta go to Pet Smart or I gotta go to somewhere or hire a dog trainer. And now I gotta do something with it, sport or so. You know what? Why don't you just live with your dog? Yeah. You know, why don't you just have a dog laying next to your couch and when somebody kicks your door and when you sleep at two o'clock at night, the dog is gonna slow him down for you so you can get your <laughs> forty-five. <Yeah. laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. You know, that's what it's all about. Yeah. You know, or when you go hiking and camping overnight, you know, you have a buddy over there. Yeah. You know, just do that. Do those things, you know. Just live with the dog. You can't do anything better. It's better than win nationals and shoot You know, have a companion. And then he chases that deer and you tell him, come and he comes and you will be in seventh heaven. That's your best competition you can ever get. You know, or he runs across the busy street and there's a car coming and you call him, come and he comes and doesn't get hit by the car. You know, that's your competition right there. 